Howdy, howdy, Chris here, and welcome to Garage Noise. Today is paint day. We'll be painting the Chevy pickup truck. We're gonna be painting the bedside and the tailgate. I've got a lot of information for you in this video. How to use a color blender or a wet bed so you can get beautiful metallic finishes. How to lay down a glassy looking clear coat. I've got some tips and techniques for you. And we'll be also spraying with a different clear coat than I typically spray with. So I can give you some information on that clear coat and maybe it'll work out well for your project. Get in the garage and make some noise. Okay, so this is where we left off on the Chevy pickup truck. We had just primered it. I had a little splatter here on my primer gun, but we're gonna prep out this primer real quick. We're gonna block it a little bit with some 320 grit sandpaper, smooth it out with some 600. Then we need to go around all the edges and sand all those areas that have been unsanded with some 600 grit sandpaper and prep those out for clear coat. Hey, okay, we're gonna be using 320. I've got a little run in this primer here, but we'll block this out. Flexible block, 320. I have a couple options for sanding the edges, the body lines, so you don't burn through. Now this right here is a Sun Gold Microfine 1200 grit scuff pad. I also have this Sun Mite. This is a flexible yellow sandpaper, and this is a 800 grit, I believe. I believe it's Kovacs uh, soft block. We're gonna go ahead and use these two things to prep out this panel for clear coat. We want to get all the edges sanded real well so we don't have any adhesion problems with our clear. Because remember, we're putting the color on here and then we're blending the rest of this panel. We're covering with clear coat only. I'm going to start by sealing this and I'm going to show you why I'm sealing this. We've got some areas where we've broken through the primer into some body filler down here and then right here as well. So rather than put another coat of primer on this, I'm going to put a, a sealer on it. We will have to be careful because we have a tight window to blend here. So I'm going to keep this sealer going this way. So I'll, when I spray the sealer, I'll spray it this way and I'll reduce my fan pattern on my gun and the volume, so the amount of sealer that's coming out so we can be real precise with where we put it. Over here, it's not so much of an issue. <clears throat> we'll also seal these spots as well. So let's do that right now. We're gonna use the U-Pole sealer. U-Pole can be used as a primer, a primer surfacer or a sealer. It mixes up four to one to two. So it mixes up four parts primer, one part activator, and then two parts urethane reducer. We're gonna mix up some sealer. I've got the Spray IQ disposable cup system. We've got our liner here with our lid and our collar. The primer we're using today is the U-Pole 2253. This mixes up four to one to two for a sealer. So we'll find our four to one to one mixing ratio. We'll put the amount of primer, we'll put the amount of activator, and then we're gonna double the amount of reducer that goes in this. Lock it on, make sure it's all sealed. I'll just use this Awada for the sealer because I'm using the Eastwood 
for the base coat. Our sealer's all ready. We're gonna put on some gloves. We're gonna wash this one more time and then we'll tack it off just before we spray our sealer. Okay, I got a new tack cloth here and some 70% ice, isopropyl alcohol. Let's wash this down real quick. That's it. So because this is a high metallic finish and it's a little bit more difficult of a color to blend, we're gonna go ahead and apply a wet bed or a clear base coat, basically clear paint that we're gonna put over this entire panel. And what that'll do is that'll help those metallics lay flat and uniform in that wet bed so what, it'll create a great transition when we apply our new paint. So we'll go ahead and mix that up. We're gonna use a product called Color Blender by Speed Coat. Now this, you can just spray right out of the can, but we're gonna just reduce it about 5% before we apply it to the panel. This is the product we're using here, uh, the C Color Blender by Speed Coat. I've used this in a previous video. You can check that video out. I'll leave a link in the description. Um, but this works really well with high metallic finishes in the heat of summer. Really, when you're doing a silver metallic, you wanna have a wet bed or a clear base coat that you can apply just so those metallics will lay flat and smooth and it'll just create a good transition when you're doing your blend. Okay, so we've let this sealer set up for a good amount of time. The reason I've let it set up for 20 to 25 minutes is because I want it completely dry before I move on to the next step. And what I'm gonna do is tack rag over this sealer area and this entire panel. When you go through each step of this process, it's always good to just keep your eye out, look for any imperfections, look for anything that's gonna cause you problems when you're painting. So I'm inspecting the surface of this panel as I'm tacking it off. If there's anything I missed, um, I also wanna make sure this feels smooth. I wanna make sure this feels smooth. If it feels rough anywhere, I want to sand that out. So if I have any particles of dust or anything of that nature, I wanna make sure it's nice and smooth. Now we're ready to apply our clear base coat. So I'm gonna spray this clear base just like paint, okay? We're gonna overlap 75, 80%. I'm gonna put it over the entire panel. Some guys will put it over just the blend area, which is fine. Now I prefer to put it over the entire panel so I have a uniform substrate to apply our base to. Okay, so now there's no need for me to wait to apply my base, first coat of base. I wanna put it on basically when this is still flashing off. That'll help my paint melt in. So when I start this blend, I have a kind of like a tight blend here. Just covering the primer, I'm gonna let the overspray start the blend. Back here, it doesn't matter as much because we're not up against the rest of the cab. I'll let this flash off for about 15 minutes and then we'll put on a second coat. 
thing I want you to understand, and new painters are prone to this, you never want to pull your trigger unless your arm is moving or let off your trigger. So you start pulling your trigger off the panel and then you paint. And when you stop, you never stop in the middle of the panel and then let off your trigger. What's that going to do? It's going to create an overabundance of paint in that area. You want to let off that trigger with your arm still moving. I know it's common sense, but I see it time and time again. I see new painters point at the panel and then they pull the trigger. That's not what you want to do. You want to be moving your arm. It's very simple, but it's going to help you out a ton. Okay, after 10 minutes, well, this is what it looks like. Obviously, it's nowhere near covered. We need probably a couple more coats, so let's go ahead and put another coat on it. Because the sealer wasn't smooth and this is a high metallic finish, it created a halo effect. So I've got a little bit of a halo. Let's see if you can see it. Well, I don't know if you can see it, but right here, there's a little bit of a halo. That's from the sealer. So let me show you how I'm gonna correct it. I'm gonna sand it out with just a little bit of light sandpaper. I've got some 800 grit sandpaper right here. This is a Sunmite. This is a, a really flexible sandpaper. It's gonna sand this halo out, and then we're gonna put another coat of clear base on it or wet bed, and then some paint. And this should correct it. Now you gotta wait until this is dry if you, if you wanna do this, or if you need to do this, okay? So basically this halo is from roughness in the sealer. It's not real noticeable in the base coat. I mean, I can notice it So I should have, if I would have seen this earlier, I could have, I could have sanded it out in the sealer, just lightly sanded the sealer. But instead, I'm doing it now. But this is the kind of stuff that happens. You just got to know how to correct it when it does happen to you. I'm not really seeing one here. I'm going to go ahead and just sand this a little bit right here as well. It's not going to hurt anything. And basically what's happening is those metallics are laying funny in that blend, that sealer blend. Make sure you tack it off good. Because this will ball up and it'll leave residue on your panel. This is the stuff you want to avoid, if at all possible. But it helps to know how to correct it if you need to. This is the kind of stuff that can ruin your paint job very quickly. Okay, I think we're good now. Let's go ahead and put a good coat of color blender on it and then we'll add another coat of paint. Okay, we're gonna let this flash off. All that's covered, but I wanna put one more insurance coat over this. Make sure all those minor scratches are covered and we can go ahead and clear it.
The halo problem has now been corrected. We have a nice silky smooth finish. And although it was very frustrating, I'm happy I was able to share with you guys how to correct those halo issues. Now it's time for some clear coat and the clear coat we're gonna be using today is the Finish One FC710. This is a spot panel clear coat. We are gonna be using a slow activator today so we can get that nice glassy finish. Now this clear coat mixes up four to one. So we'll find the four to one mixing ratio at the bottom of our Spray IQ disposable cup system. We'll add our clear coat and then we'll add our slow activator. Now it's important to use the right speed activator for the temperature you're spraying in. This is gonna give you the best results in your clear coat finish. I'll snap in the lid and then add the collar and the gun we're gonna be using today is the AeroPro A610. This is a low volume, low pressure paint gun perfect for home use and small compressors. The gun settings for this gun and clear coat is 30 PSI, 2.5 turns out from closed on our fluid volume. We have our fan pattern wide open. It's important to overlap about 80% when you're making your passes with this particular gun. You also wanna make sure you have a consistent speed and a consistent distance from the panel. On our first coat of clear, we're not concerned if it's not absolutely perfect. We just wanna introduce that clear to the surface. And then when we do our second coat, that's where we're gonna refine it, make sure it's nice and glassy and has that flat looking finish that we're looking for. Now I'm breaking up this panel into sections. Now you can do it however you want. If you wanna run the whole length of the bedside, you can do that, but I just break it down into two or three sections. Um, either way is fine. Okay, here it is after the first coat of clear. Let's see if we have any runs. We got a little dry spray there, a little dry spray there. Slicked it out a little bit better here, but we're not concerned about how slick it is at this point. We just wanna get a good coat of clear on it. Now I, I sprayed it dry over here uh, on purpose so we can introduce that clear to the surface. Remember, we didn't put any color here, so there could be a reaction with clear coat to the old paint or to the old clear. So I wanted to dust coat that on and then I hit it a little bit harder here. We're gonna put our second and final coat on this. I'm gonna hit it a little bit harder and we'll slick it out and it's ready. So let's set you up and lay down another coat of clear. Taking a good look at this paint job, I can see that those halos are gone. All our metallics look nice and uniform. The blend looks great and the clear coat came out beautifully. Now, if we would have painted over those halos, we would have had to repaint this vehicle. So it's good to just have patience. If you see something that doesn't look right, correct it before you apply your clear coat. You had to overcome the halo effect around the sealer and I showed you how to correct that, but overcoming obstacles is part of painting. And if you wanna be a painter, if you wanna develop your skills, 
You've got to learn how to overcome those obstacles when the situation arises. There's a thousand different things that can go wrong when you're painting your vehicle. Key is to understand what's happening, when it's happening, and how you can correct it and get yourself out of it. My goal is to use my experience to help you eliminate some of those obstacles before they arise. But overall, this finish came out beautifully. We've got a few little particles of dust, as always, when you're painting in an open garage, but the bodywork looks good. This vehicle just needs a little bit of cut and buff and we'll be ready to go. We definitely had some struggles with painting this truck, but overall it came out beautifully. We we're able to correct those halos. The blend transition looks great. The color match looks good. And after we cut and buffed it, the clear coat looks beautiful as well. So this vehicle is ready to go. Listen, I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, leave me a comment down below. I appreciate each and every one of you watching. And if you want to learn more about paint and body repair, check out one of these videos now. We'll see you next time on Garage Noise.